Hey everybody, welcome to Keystone Eats, the local PA food and beer podcast here to showcase everything local in our great state of Pennsylvania. Uh, we have another another guest on our show this week, and it's a little different from our, our normal beer uh, showcasing we've had lately. Uh, with the with the the pandemic and everything, jumping into the food has been a little tougher on that end. So it, I'm I'm glad to bring on something a little different here with uh, a local farmer from the Lancaster area. She's doing great work in terms of providing a super local source for chicken, and it's all ec- ethically ethically sourced and humanely prepared. I think that's the tagline that's on our website. It's probably in my notes somewhere. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll, I'll intro our guest right now. Her name is Lizzie Boone. How's it going, Lizzie? It's going great. Thank you very much, Alex, for having me. Of course. We, talk, we touched a little bit on it in the intro there, but uh, why don't you tell me who you are and what you do to provide a great service to, our, to the Lancaster area and beyond? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much nailed the tagline. Um, so I'm getting started here in Lancaster County raising pastured poultry um, and adding some garden herbs and some cut flowers into that as well. Um, So what that entails is raising the birds as humanely and ethically as possible, um, really trying to let the chickens be chicken um, so that local families, local whoever you are, can get some really great food, especially right now as we're all a little bit uncertain about where food is coming from. To so just really be able to help the community has been really awesome. And like you said, providing that uh, that that source of food that you you know where it's coming from compared to when you go down to the grocery store and and, and get chicken or beef or something mm-hmm. like that. That I mean, probably came ten states away at this point. And um, yeah. and and that's a huge thing in terms of being environmentally friendly and 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 you know it's coming from an ethically raised source for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I looked into what you do, you, what you do a little bit, and you went to Pittsburgh and for school. And it, it seems like you started off at the the farm that you currently raise your chickens is Verdant View Farm. Correct. Yes, Verdant View Farm. And you were there for a little bit, went to school, came back, and you know, pretty much stuck around at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, some people are like, uh, "So, what are you doing?" Um, essentially, yeah, I started there in high school, um, just as a summer job. Um, they do farm tours and, um, they had a dairy at the time. And so it was just kind of a summer gig, went to school, was headed towards a medical field. And then once I graduated, I had a gap year, um, while I was applying to graduate schools. So I went back knowing that it was a good place to just work. And I loved the people there. And in the midst of the hard work, seeing the rewards, Um, developing relationships. I really saw um, the beauty of the life that farming leads and kind of the community that it builds. So yeah, stuck around. Yeah, that seemed to to really suck you in then. And and, and, and here you are, you know, how many years later still doing it, which is awesome. Yeah. Was there a certain point where it pushed that that you saw being pushed to doing this full time? I mean, I, I'm sure you you teetered a little bit at some point. You know, obviously this wasn't a maybe desired path at a certain point. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, you, you built those relationships. Is is that what sucked sucked you in full time then? Uh, somewhat. I I would say that the people you surround yourself with have a very very deep impact on how you view the world and how you view yourself and and what you're doing. Um, sure. So my coworkers were a big part of it and. Um, I'm also a, a big Wendell Berry fan, um, and so he he's a essayist, a farmer, um, kind of a, a huge spokesperson for local economy and farming. And um, in reading his works, I really was drawn to the life that can be lived in this um, in this career, in this in the land, working in the land, working with people. Um, so reading his book over the winter. Um, when everything was quiet and still and you're kind of left with your thoughts and you're like, all right, I think I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. And, and to, to definitely have that little motivation from, from the, your you know favorite literature definitely helps drive that. And um, I, I've had the, I've had the same push is, is um, mm-hmm. my, my fiance, she, she loves gardening and we've had 
spent a lot of time this year preparing our garden and making sure we can actually grow a lot of food that we eat. And, mm-hmm. and we actually dived into the poultry world this year too, especially because of the whole, the whole world situations. Like yeah. you go to the grocery store, half the stuff's missing. I'm like, well, forget this. I'm going to go, you know, raise eggs in my backyard. I'm, now I know I have eggs. <laughs> yeah. How's that going for you? Very well. We actually had a, an old potting shed that we kind of converted into a chicken coop and we have four, four happy little girls out there now. Nice. Just waiting to grow up and start laying eggs, and I'm I'm in the in the middle of building them a nice big run, so they they have a nice a nice open space to run around in. So yeah, yeah. I'm excited. It's my first time. So yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so why don't you tell me a little bit about your 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 main goal and driving force behind uh, Meyer Hill Chicken? You know, what's your what's your vision to to provide these these ethically raised chickens? You want to talk a little bit about how you know, the difference between your chickens and maybe some, you know, regular grocery store chicken? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, Well, I'll say right off the bat, it's a complicated issue. (laughs) Um, Oh, absolutely. And and I still have a lot to learn. Um, I think what I see is that while, you know, there's a a lot of people to feed in the world. Um, We need mass production of food. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you are able, uh, to produce good quality food. And if you are able to support that, I think you should. Um, and so to me, it's because I'm able to, I, mm-hmm. I should. Um, and so I think the ability to, yeah, like you said earlier, to know where your food comes from. Um, and I love knowing where the food I'm growing goes to. I think that's mm-hmm. a big part of why I do it. I wouldn't want to grow something and sell it to a store and never see where it ends up. I love getting to meet the people who are taking my food, um, giving them cooking tips or hearing their cooking tips. A lot of these people know more about cooking <laughs> than I do. Um, so yeah, I think the ability to raise something that connects you to people, because um, we all eat and it's something we have to do. So why not do it in the in a beautiful way, I guess. I don't think I could say it better. That's that's awesome. <laughs> or drink a beer in a beautiful way. I think I, <laughs> I'm sure there's a good beer for chicken. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. I I'm, I think I have a list that tells me those things. So <laughs> is is, uh, uh, is beer pairing with a, a thing, or is that more just with wine? Like, is there a, is there oh, an art to beer pairing? Oh, it's absolutely beer pairing. I mean, you you think about your heavier beers being better with like a a hearty meal compared mm-hmm. to a lighter beer is nicer with like a salad or salmon or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A por- pairing a beer, especially stuff that's has a very distinct taste. Um, y- you see like, you know, stouts or porters getting paired with things that are, you know, really filling and, and like barbecue and sausages mm-hmm. um, compared to, yeah, like a, like a weed ale, which is a little lighter summery beer. Sometimes fruity is good with like, vegetable dishes or salads and, and stuff like that it it it's uh you can you can really dive into it for sure and and it, it they have my my one chart here i have even cheese pairings and dessert pairings oh, it's okay. it, it goes all into you know obviously like a like a nice stout beer is good with like a chocolate or peanut butter de- you know dessert uh-huh. versus if you had like a fruity dessert or a cream, like cream cheese yeah a fruity dessert would be nice for a, a nice blonde ale something that's light and 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 uh, citrusy. All right. Well, this is something I'll have to dive into, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting world for sure, and and that's that's definitely talking about food and beer together. I wanted to make sure I can, you know, speak to that a little bit to uh-huh. be able to to match those th- things up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it it sounds like you're you're trying to really push the having that food locally, you know, locally sourced, and and a, a big thing on. In, in my mantras is, is to reduce the, you know, the miles that food's driving to get to you. I mean, I can go down to a local market and I can see, you know, the, I can see the farm that the strawberries or the other produce was grown right next to me mm-hmm. compared to the strawberries that are, you know, coming from some field, you know, a thousand miles away. Yeah. And, and, and that, that, that is a very environmentally, uh, you know, smart thing to do is to make sure that food's not driving thousands of miles and possibly spoiling before it even gets to me or having a very small shelf life. And, Mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I think that's something to, to take into account there when you're, you're, you're buying your local food for sure. 
Yeah, yeah, and the the waste. Yeah, if things aren't spoiling, you really cut down on wastes. And yeah, yeah, it's definitely great to be able to go right to the source. You eliminate eliminate a lot of other factors and yeah, and, and having having that that source being so close, you know, it's it's going to have a longer shelf life. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you slaughter a chicken one day and sell it the next day, that's about as fresh as you can get. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's some people who like to come on butchering day and pick it up. Um, wow. Because I I sell them whole. I don't do any of the parts right now. Um, just okay. Labor and stuff. But if people like to break them down on their own, um, they get it fresh and can do it themselves right away at home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, and I'm not breaking them down currently. I mean, that saves on labor time, so that's that's completely fair. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's the the culture of eating as well you know we're very accustomed i say we and i include myself of mm -hmm. we, we like select cuts like a chicken breast we're very comfortable with uh, mm -hmm. but if you gave me chicken feet and asked me to do something with it i don't i know you can make a stock but i haven't done it so learning to i'm not going <laughs> to give people chicken feet but learning to eat the whole um the whole parts instead of just select cuts um, yeah is really good in changing our culture's view of food yeah, and 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 speaking on the the stock part, like even when you you break down a chicken, cook it whole, and and eat it for a meal, you mm -hmm. have all that leftover parts, you mm -hmm. know, for stock. And 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 in my household, we take you know leftover you know veggie scraps and freeze them in a bag, mm -hmm. and then use it as stock when we have enough. It's it's yep. it's all about using what you can. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, I think you spoke on it a little bit. You you also grow herbs as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, that goes kind of right along the lines of what we were saying of um you know cooking in the whole the whole realm of it um mm. so i i don't have the capacity to grow vegetables i love doing a little bit in the garden but herbs were something i could kind of throw in as here let me add something extra to your meal um and they're very easy to grow if i have the space and i do um and so if people don't this is kind of let them do that so your typical basil thyme oregano um, parsley, those, those kind of things. So people are welcome to add those on and make something good. Yeah, and and, <laughs> uh, not, and all that pairs pretty well with, with chicken too. So it, it makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. You see, you're, I think you're still raising your chickens at Verdant View Farm, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Why don't you talk a little bit on about your, your favorite thing about working with, with poultry and maybe a little bit on cattle as well. Cause I think they have beef cattle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, they, or I should say, we we're raising grass-fed beef cattle at Verdant View, um, okay. and so that beef we sell in a very similar fashion to the the chicken that I'm raising um, directly to consumers. And to me, I I love the cattle's personality. You know, chickens have personality, but the since the cattle we're raising from cow to calf the whole the whole life, I, you know you know them a little bit more than the chickens. But what's really neat is the symbiotic relationship that these two create. Um, so the cattle are grazing through the pastures and they mow it down to the perfect height for the chickens to come through. The chickens don't like really long grass. They like it shorter. So when the chickens follow the cattle, they leave incredible amounts of nitrogen, which are great for growing the grass again. Um, they also pick out fly larvae and the, the cow manure and keep the flies down, keep the bugs down. Um, and so it's just a really neat relationship um, that both of them um, provide to each other. Um, so I love seeing that. It's really neat. Yeah, it, they they kind of work together to to feed each other, and that, mm -hmm. that's it, they have that like you said symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. um, it do you do you move your poultry throughout the the pasture with just like a like a tractor tractor? Uh, what do they call them? Yeah, yeah, chicken coop, coop essentially. Yeah, yeah. chicken tractor. I have started out with that, um, kind of like the Salatin model, and I'm in the middle of changing that up. Um, so there's a, a, what's called like a nomad style. So instead of a, a sheltered coop, you have just shade and then a large enclosed um, electric fence that that whole unit rotates um, through the pasture and just allows them even more space than a coop. Um, so they they are um, dealing with all this crazy cold front that we're getting right now um but i'm hoping they're yeah. okay 
Yeah, that that cold that cold weather was uh, unexpected and unwanted. <laughs> Not invited by anyone. <laughs> <laughs> we we scrambled yesterday to cover up our beans and corn and all our melons and strawberries. It's, it was not uh, not pleasant for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's glad to hear the I'm glad to hear that they the, like you said the pol- uh, poultry and cattle really get to work together and 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 feed each other essentially. Um, I I looked a little more into to Verdant View and. They, they they seem like a a very open and, and friendly place. They offer you know obviously beef and beef products. Um, they're a bed and breakfast, and a, they they do farm tours as well. That yeah. that sounds awesome. Yeah, to say they are an opening farm is, I feel like an understatement. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> they're really incredible. Um, the owners Elisa and Patrick Fleming. Um, Elisa is the fourth generation um of her family farming, and so them and their their young son are doing it and so yeah the bed and breakfast has been um running for a long time now about uh, i won't say the number because i'll get it wrong um but <laughs> a long time and then the tours as well so yeah it's the educational component is huge for them allowing people from it's great you get city people you get international guests who come they get to learn about food um pet a cow milk a cow um just really interact with the land and yeah it's really beautiful to see yeah it, it it's definitely uh like you said a, a long-standing farm and i think i saw I'm, i'll probably get it wrong too but i think the bed and breakfast is around since about the 50s so it's mm-hmm. it's been a long time yeah and uh, and the family's been there for I, almost 100 years at this point it, it i look back in their their kind of timeline they have on their website and it's uh-huh. it's super cool to see yeah 1916 um, jeez <laughs> and the at least his great great grandfather who bought the farm was from across the road so you could <laughs> take it back even further if you wanted to yeah they've been around there for a, a long time for sure <laughs> yeah. um you, you spoke on a little bit with especially talking with people and 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 having people come and get their chicken do you have a favorite recipe that you've you've cooked up with your chicken or, or maybe a favorite recipe that someone else has has dawned upon you to cook that's a good question <laughs> I recently tried spatchcocking a chicken, um, which sounds horrible, but really it, it's just cutting out the spine of the whole chicken and then pressing it down flat and roasting it. And yeah. so a lot of the problems with roasting a chicken are that the the breast dries out before the thigh is done and then you have dried chicken meat. Um, but keeping it flat helps it to cook really evenly. And it did. So that was a new and fun trick but i think i have a lot of a lot of learning to do i want to do a lot with them this year so we'll stay tuned on that <laughs> <laughs> I, I i can't wait to hear I, I i always look for a good a good cooking recipe yeah we got plenty of them but yeah the the spatchcock is a, a cool technique that i think i've heard on like tv shows before where they you know it like you said it gets spread out so it cooks a little <laughs> more evenly it doesn't dry out mm-hmm. it's a it's a neat little technique for sure mm-hmm. yeah um, I think that's about it. Is there anything we missed that you'd like to mention? You know, I don't think so. You had some great questions in there. I, I'm trying my best here to to learn how to interview. It's it's been a it's been a roller coaster for sure. Yeah, it's an art, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are your website is MeyerHillChicken.com. Correct. Yes. Where you can find all the information and and the stuff you offer you have your herbs and and um a little bit of merch too i was i was eyeing up the hat and the sticker so i might uh i might have to to spoil myself yeah yeah, Um, you're out in the sun (laughs) might as well protect yourself right exactly and then uh verdant view farm i think they're i i I, i'm i'm blanking on their website hold on i want to toss it in here i think is it just verdantview.com yes verdantview.com perfect yeah so you have your website, MeyerHillChicken.com and VerdantView.com. Mm-hmm. They offer their uh, farm tours, their bed and breakfast. They have all kinds of information on there. Um, a, a store that you can look at and see what they offer. Definitely a, a cool place to check out, like you said, with the especially hopefully when the world's back to normal a little bit. <laughs> yeah. People can people can get back there and check it out. I I I, I definitely want to come down and see it. And yeah, uh, I think your your chicken might be a a regular purchase for me in the future because it's um something i i've been looking for for a little bit mm-hmm. well that's great yeah we'd, we'd love to have you when when we're all open and running <laughs> yeah I, I i can't wait to get back out in the world i've been talking to all these people and i haven't been able to 
go and actually see the places. So right. I'm sure you have quite a list of things you have to hit. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was great talking to you. I, I'm glad you reached out, and I'm I I hope we get to talk again in the future. I, I hope you had fun on the show. Like I said, super simple. Yeah, yeah. This is my first podcast, so thank you for making it uh, an incredible experience. Awesome. I, I'm I'm glad I could. I could be the first podcast. I hope you you check out a couple more and and um, hope you listen to us in the future. And that's about it. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a wrap, I guess. Yeah, it was it was really nice talking to you, Lizzie. I'm glad I got to 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 have this 20 minutes to to chat yeah. about what you do. Yeah, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Of course, I will talk to you hopefully in the future. Sounds good. Have a good night. You too. Bye.